Low back pain is a complex issue despite its simplistic label. While we typically attribute low back pain to biological causes such as muscle strains, disc herniations, or joint dysfunctions, there are other factors that can contribute to lower back pain, and these factors can either be psychological or social factors. Therefore, it would make sense in a treatment program for low back pain to consider these other factors. But does a program actually focusing on psychological and social factors improve outcomes? A study by Mary O'Keefe published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine looked at how cognitive functional therapy, an approach used to address the biopsychosocial factors, compared to a group exercise program for the treatment of low back pain. According to the study, cognitive functional therapy is an approach used to reconceptualize pain from a biopsychosocial perspective, and the way that they do this is that they address misconceptions about low back pain and overcome barriers to recovery. And cognitive functional therapy occurs in three different stages. The first stage is the cognitive stage where they're trying to make sense of the pain. The second stage is exposure with control. And then the third stage is lifestyle changes. The group exercise arm of this study included three different portions. There was a brief educational component on pain an exercise component, and then a relaxation component. The exercise portion was not tailored to the specific individuals and included a little bit of cardio, a little bit of strengthening, and then also stretching as well. The main difference in the exercise used for the group therapy sessions versus the cognitive functional therapy was that one was tailored, which is the CFT program, where the group therapy session was not tailored to the individuals. The study found that the cognitive functional therapy group had greater reductions in disability as measured by the Oswestry outcome assessment compared to group exercise, and this was significant at both 6 months and 12 months post-treatment. Interestingly, when we look at pain, there was no significant difference in that same time frame between the two groups, and this is despite both groups uh, reporting satisfaction with their treatments. There are a couple of key points this study has for clinical practice. The first one is that if we're looking at improving function, so decreasing disability with low back pain, that we need to account for both psychological and social factors. Typically when we do treatments for low back pain, they consist of core strengthening, spinal manipulation, and soft tissue therapy. And these are all based on improving the biological factors. So increasing the function of the joint, strengthening the muscles around the spine, and these can all be beneficial in the treatment for low back pain. But when we look at the results of the study, if we're actually looking at improving function, having the cognitive functional therapy approach, which encompasses both the psychological and social factors, actually produce greater improvements in function. And when looking specifically at the pain in low back pain, another consideration is how specific do our exercise programs need to be to be beneficial. When we look at these two groups, the group exercise program wasn't tailored at all to any of the individual needs of the people with low back pain. And on the other hand, we have the cognitive functional therapy group, which is a highly tailored program. And yet when we look at the pain in both of these groups, there was no difference between the two groups. There was a reduction in pain in the first six months, but then that gradually increased close to where baseline was at the end of 12 months. And this resembles some of the other research on exercise for low back pain that's found that specific exercises such as core exercises don't produce a greater benefit than just a walking program. And so there's probably a lot of variation between individuals, but overall, there doesn't seem to be one exercise program that's superior to another. And the results of this study calls into question the clinical importance of pain as an outcome measure. Typically, we would say that a successful treatment looks like the resolution of pain. So someone coming in with some level of pain and leaving with zero out of 10. However, when we look at the data from this study, the, most of the participants had around a 6 out of 10 on a pain scale, and then at 6 months, they were around 4 to 5, and so that's less than a 50% reduction after 6 months. And then, as stated before, at 12 months, that 
pain intensity gradually increased to around 4 to 5, which is pretty similar to what baseline was. Yet most of these uh, participants with low back pain said that they were satisfied with the care that they had received. Obviously this isn't an either or scenario where you either have to focus on functional improvement or pain intensity reduction. However, if we look at how most of our treatments are laid out, we place a heavy emphasis on pain intensity. What is your pain level today? What's the worst it's been in the last 24 hours? How much reduction since starting treatment? And the question that we should really be asking ourselves as clinicians is whether this is framing um, a successful treatment as purely just pain intensity instead of asking what improvements functionally, what else are they doing, how has their life changed, which could then frame uh, a successful treatment less to do with pain intensity, although obviously we'd love to have a reduction in pain intensity, but instead focusing on functional improvements instead. In summary, biological factors are the common target for the treatment of low back pain. However, psychological and social factors play a significant role in the development of low back pain. The cognitive functional therapy approach seeks to address the biopsychosocial factors that contribute to low back pain. And this study suggests that this cognitive functional therapy approach is an effective way to reduce the disability associated with low back pain. Thank you for watching this video on cognitive functional therapy for the treatment of low back pain. I hope that you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to be notified of future videos, hit the bell icon right next to that. I'll see you guys in the next video.